What's up everyone, it's Tria Mike. It's November 21st, 2013, and I wanna to talk to you about some amazing footage that came across my Facebook page for me to look at, and it is absolutely the most awesome footage I've ever seen. It's absolutely amazing. There's no other way for me to say it. I look at footage like this all the time to analyze it for people and give them my opinion on it, and when I'm looking at this footage, it meets all of my criteria to be a legitimate video in my eyes. Uh, I firmly believe when we capture UFOs on video, the reason why they're so distorted and fuzzy and never clear image is because of the technology that's being used within the craft. It's either the, the gravitational engines are having an effect on our imagery or they have specific technology that distorts the imagery so we can't get good imagery on it. When we see these crystal clear f videos from third phase of the moon, all that uh, CGI bullshit, it's all fake as hell to me guys every video that I've ever recorded of a legitimate UFO sighting with my own eyes and then picked up the video camera always comes out a little bit distorted or fuzzy regardless of what I'm using it's never perfect so when I'm looking at this video that part is meeting the criteria overall the video meets the criteria the quality of the video the way that uh, foreground objects are in focus and background objects are out of focus and vice versa. It, ju it just meets all the criteria, guys. So I want to play it for you, and uh, it's, it's just a subject that's very near to me. I've witnessed this personally as it uh, came over Arizona into New Mexico and Texas, and it entered in pieces. I did not witness a solid object enter and then break up. I witnessed uh, pieces entering, and then more pieces coming off of the pieces. And that's what I saw right here from my own backyard. So this subject to me is, is very near to my heart because it was the second space shuttle disaster that I witnessed live with my own eyes. I also witnessed the Challenger. So let me play this footage for you guys and then I'm going to come back and analyze a little bit of it for you. But before the video starts the roll of the actual footage, uh, there's a couple paragraphs in here that was tagged along with the footage that I want you guys to read. I hope you enjoy it.
So what we're looking at right here is a piece that was uh, released a while back and it was apparently supposed to be a recording of the cockpit as they were prepping for re-entry and during re-entry and we hear a conversation going on uh, it really just kind of looked like a, a staged set type of thing and I'm gonna go ahead and roll a little bit of this because I'm gonna show you one of the things in this video that was released that really caught my attention and made me just think that it was a piece of propaganda released to uh, uh, give a false opinion and to form the cover up for us. So let's roll this real quick. And I'm going to go back off. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Now notice the guy with the camera. I want you to pay attention to the camera and the camera movements and remember that they're prepping re-entry and they're they're basically already on their their trajectory to make the re-entry so everybody's strapped in everybody's buckled down they're strapped in all right they're ready to to, to pull those G's and and they're all prepared so just keep that in mind Now look at his camera. In order for him to have made that shot, he would have had to have stood up out of his chair or because they're in space still and they have zero Gs, he just he floated up, right? He just kind of nudged himself up and he floated up. There's no way he would have got that shot sitting in his chair, just sitting down. Even if he raised his arms up, I really don't think that he could have done that. But that's a lot of math going into that aspect right there. So I want you guys to keep that in mind that this was staged. Okay, well, that's working. This was a staged event, guys. Do you see over my shoulder or whatever? I was feeling it doesn't show up nearly as much as the back. It's going pretty good now. Now remember guys, they're having a crisis, okay? They're in space. This shuttle is their only means of survival and their only way to get home, okay? So as I stated before, they're already on their trajectory to make re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. Everybody in that shuttle, according to protocol, is strapped in their seats and they're not getting out. Why is this guy just floating around the cabin like he's filming on a movie set? Like they, they're making sure that they give us specific shots, guys. And uh, that's why I got to call bullshit on this specific video. And I've always called bullshit on it. I've never believed it. And, but that's up for you guys to decide on that one. Shit's about to get very real, guys. So right here they're calling out a bogey at 10 o'clock high to mission control. So let's just pay attention. Now. Now, right here, uh, they were trying to focus their camera in on the space station, so when they swung it over to the object, it would be in focus with no fumbling around, the, and the transmission cut. Now we have mission control coming on, talking about they're losing this, they're losing all these different telemetries, and it wasn't all at once. They didn't lose all telemetry all at once. It didn't just 
explode in one big bang. There was multiple explosions throughout the ship because things were failing uh, uh, seconds apart from each other. And when we get the tele when we're getting telemetry, we can tell down to the nanosecond what happened right up until the point where the image. Uh, until where the telemetry stops. So let's listen to everything that's being said here. And I want you to really pay attention to this video, guys, because this is the type of video that I'm talking about that meets all my criteria to tell me that this is a 100% legitimate video. All right, Max. Go. We just lost uh, tire pressure on left outboard and left inboard, both tires. FYI, I've just lost four separate uh, temperature transducers on the left side of the vehicle, uh, hydraulic return temperatures. Four high return temps? To the left outboard and left inboard elevons. Okay, is there anything common to them, DSC or MDM or anything? I mean, you're telling me you lost them all at exactly the same time. No, right? not exactly. They were within probably four or five seconds of each other. Okay. Where are those? Where is that instrumentation located? They're all the, four of them are located in the uh, aft part of the left wing, right in front of the elevons, elevon actuators. And there okay. is no commonality. No commonality. And there's no commonality between all these tire pressure instrumentations and the hydraulic return instrumentations? Uh, no, sir, there's not. We've also lost the uh, nose gear down talk back and the right main gear down talk back. Nose gear and right main gear down talk back? Yes, sir. And flight ECOM? ECOM. I've got four temperature sensors on the bottom line data that are all scale low. Columbia. So here's where I start to have a problem with some of this video, guys, because I'm going to show you a picture right here. This is STS-107 on takeoff uh, for that mission. Now, we're looking at the left side of the shuttle, and if you pay attention, you look where it says United States, and we see the flag. We see the United States flag, and then we see United States. Now, after United States, we do not see anything. It's just blank white. There's no logo there, no nothing. In the video, we have a NASA logo there. Now, you're going to ask me, how do you know you're looking at the right part of the craft? Well, I'm going to show you right now. In this picture, we have the flag and then United States. On the takeoff picture, we have the flag, we have United States. How do I know that that matches the left side of the craft? Because on the right side of the craft, as seen in this picture on a previous landing, we have United States, then we have the flag. It's reversed, guys. So I know for a fact that we're looking at the left side of a shuttlecraft. And I know for a fact that the flag on the left side of the shuttlecraft indicates to me that what we're seeing on the left side of our screen is going towards the front of the craft and the right side of the screen would be the back of the craft. Either way that we look at it, I can find no NASA logo on STS-107 in any of the official photos. Is that, uh, is that a deal breaker? Not really, but it is something to think about, guys. It's something to really, really think about when we're looking at this footage. As real and as convincing as it looks, we have to keep this into consideration. Houston, UHF comm check. Columbia, Houston, UHF comm check. I'm uh, Charlie Hobart calling uh, Columbia on UHF frequency as it approaches uh, the Merritt Island tracking station range in Florida. Communications uh, with Columbia were lost at about 8 a.m. Central Time, about uh, 10, 10 minutes ago. This is Mission Control Houston. Any debris that is located in the vicinity of the north central Texas area that uh, may be related to the shuttle contingency should be reported to local law enforcement who will then uh, report to NASA. It should be avoided. Uh, debris could be potentially hazardous due to toxic substances that are used as propellants on the space shuttle. 
Flight controllers here are securing all information and notes and data pertinent to the scheduled descent and landing of the shuttle today as part of contingency procedures. Search and rescue teams in the Dallas-Fort Worth area have been alerted. Again, any debris that is located in the north central Texas vicinity that may be related to the space shuttle contingency should be reported to local law enforcement authorities and should be avoided as it may be hazardous due to toxic substances that are used as propellants.